I do spend a fair amount of time out on the beach collecting things that look like this, but a lot of times it needs a little bit of work before they look like that. Sometimes your sand dollars might be discolored. They might be dark. You might find shells with green stuff on them, or you're finding shells with barnacles and other kind of hard to remove chunky, crusty things. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I do with my shells and how I clean them up to get them to look like this. So let's go clean some shells. Hello beach friends. All right, we are gonna clean some shells and some sand dollars. So we're gonna start with those. Those are gonna be the easiest. We are going to use hydrogen peroxide. And guys, really that's it. So that's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put those in a container, just cover them with hydrogen peroxide, and you can let that sit for as long as you want. There is no time, the longer you let it sit, the whiter the thing the uh, sand dollars will become. We'll do periodic check-ins and I'll just show you how those particular sand dollars are lightening up. Okay, this is the next batch of shells I'm going to take care of. Now the first step I'm gonna do is soak these guys in bleach. For some of them, I'm gonna soak them in bleach and they're going to be done. Others, it's just going to be the first step and then we're going to go ahead and dip them in acid. So something like this. I want to soak it in bleach to try to kind of loosen up those little pieces. I'll try to chip that off first, but I'm hoping that the bleach soak is going to help that out. Same with this guy. So I think there's hope here for this true tulip, but I'm going to try to do some scraping and then I'm going to soak it in bleach and we'll see what that comes out like. Now I have this particular apple murex which has this beautiful purple shiny interior and i really don't want to dip that in acid so i'm going to start with bleach we'll see how it goes i have a this one as well it's got a beautiful purple aperture in there with a little bit of shine so we're going to go ahead and start with bleach some of these hopefully i'll be done this one once i soak it in bleach i'll be done I'm going to soak that in bleach, kind of see what happens. The scallops, once they're soaked in bleach, they'll be done. And then we'll just take it from there. I'm doing this guy. See this, this brownish layer? That's periostracum. And it works fantastic on the Florida conch. So this will all come off. And I'm just wondering if it's going to remove that too. So that's a little bit of an experiment. Same with this calico clam. There is a little bit of periostracum on there. And so I'm just gonna see if the bleach, sorry, see if the bleach will remove that. So I'm gonna do a little experiment on those. This guy, again, I'm gonna to try to remove, chip off as much. I'm gonna put that to the side because I'm gonna do a little bit of work on that before we soak it in bleach. And then this one will probably bleach and then dip in acid. We'll just kind of have to see how it goes. The acid will remove this really shiny piece. So. I'll see how I feel after it's soaked in acid. So I'm gonna do a little bit of scraping. This one too, that needs a little bit of scraping. And I'm choosing shells that are kind of beat up because we really wanna kind of see how this process works. If it's not starting out so great, we'll just see how good we can get it. So I'm gonna pick on those for a little bit. The rest of these I'm gonna put in the bucket and let's see how well I can get these cleaned up with just a little bit of picking before I put them in the bleach soak. Before we check in on those crusty ones, I just wanted to show you this guy. So it's got a little bit of green. So anything green, I really just put in bleach, unless of course it's an angel wing or a sand dollar, in which case I will try the hydrogen peroxide. But this one, it's only gonna get bleach. And like I said, we'll just see how that comes out. These are the tools I will be using to try to pick off some of this gunk on these shells. They're just dental tools. Just be real careful and when you're using it you're going to want to you know push the instrument away from you so you don't accidentally end up stabbing yourself all right see if i can do this kind of give you guys an idea 
So when you're gonna pick away, I like to kind of just get it underneath the edge of some of that gunky stuff and just kind of pick it away. And I'm pushing away from myself because this way you're, you might end up with a puncture in your thumb. So just push away or if you're gonna, depending on what tool you're using, just do it away from yourself. So hopefully you don't get injured while you're going through this process. Okay, so this is post scrape. Got most of the, you know, really three dimensional big chunks off. And then again, I'm hoping while, or once this is in the bleach, it'll kind of help them loosen up other stuff. This one should be just about done. And this one as well. So we're just gonna stick that in a container, cover it with some bleach and let that soak. And then these, we will come back to these. These are all the ones I've selected. I'm only gonna dip these in acid only, or actually I'm not dipping this in acid at all. And we'll talk about that when the time comes. So we'll come back to these guys once we're done checking in on the soaking shells in bleach. All right, they are looking really, really good. Um, like I said, this one looks like it's complete, it's done. There, I, I'm not gonna do anything else. Now these are still, wet so they're gonna look still they're go they're gonna look more vibrant than they are when they're dry so i'm basically gonna let them hang out because take a look here look at how much so i got a lot of gunk off that one i'll probably go back and scrape it a little bit more this one i'm gonna definitely try to pick off a little bit more of that white stuff and then we'll take a look we'll see it's hard to tell when they're wet they look great but again once they dry we'll see what these guys look like and then figure out where we go from there some of these this is the end of the line i'm not doing anything else this is going to you know your my i'm not dipping that in acid i'm not dipping that in acid none of those uh not this well maybe undecided these yes so we're just i'll come back we're going to let them dry we'll take a look at them see how they look after they're totally dry and then determine what if any next steps will be so i just took a minute and all that white stuff really popped right off, even this guy. So I went and kind of tried to find anything and it came off real easy. I just, I again, use this, kind of get it under the edge of it, point it away from you and pick it off. So I think that the bleach does a great job in weakening those barnacles and those white spots. So something to consider if you're really struggling with something that has some, some of that harder beach stuff on it. So again, we'll be back, let them dry and we'll take it from there. Now here's an update on the sand dollars. These have been soaking for about four days total. Some of them are almost bone white. I mean, just gorgeous. And then some of them are being a little bit more stubborn. So I'm going to just, I'm going to take the ones that are ready to come out, out. Look at that. But these guys, I'm going to let soak for just a little bit longer. And that's the beauty of the hydrogen peroxide is that it's not going to damage the the sand dollars so you can leave it in here as long as you want and it's not going to hurt them so pretty so i'm going to keep those soaking and then we're going to turn back to the shells okay now that the shells are dry let's quickly review and we're at this point i'm going to determine what needs acid and what i'm going to stop with now a couple that i already mentioned that i'm going to stop with something like this this is a florida fighting conch it was only soaked in bleach so this is done it's got that nice shiny covering if i were to dip this in acid it would remove this shiny coating there that that shine would go away so that's why i don't tip typically i don't dip things that are that do have a natural shine in the acid this also had that periostracum on it and the bleach took it off and it's got that beautiful natural shine done with that one 
and then this one too that's another one I'm not going to do anything else with that so those are done and then we start getting into these and with scallops i'm not going to bother they look fine so those i'm also not going to dip they are just lovely the way they are this one it's got a little bit of stuff on there so what happens and someone much smarter than me let me know about this is that the shells are made up of calcium carbonate and when they lay on the seafloor they do collect more calcium so that's what that thin like layer of white is that is calcium and then the acid which we will dip it in there's the acid will remove that top layer thereby remo um, revealing the lovely colors underneath now I'm in a, a little bit of a conundrum with some of these because I don't want to remove that beautiful natural shine like of this particular apple murex. So I'm debating, I still don't know. I'd, I'm thinking maybe I'll try to dip it in pieces. We'll see, maybe, I think I have two of them. That one's really, really beautiful. That one also has a, a very nice interior. And then there was another, this one. This one was also pretty beautiful. It probably would clean up fantastic but I'm gonna ruin that, that shiny edge. Now, someone else had told me you can cover it with wax and then dip it in the acid. Ugh. So I'm, I'm still debating on what I'm gonna do with those. This one, very exciting. This I'm definitely dipping. Tulips will sometimes have a natural shine. You can see a little bit there, but just everything else considered, I'm gonna go ahead and dip that. This one also I've been really kind of working on. Um, I could dip it. There's really not much shine going on there. And when you can restore some of the shine, I'm gonna do it with mineral oil. I've heard other people have used uh, wax, uh, car wax. There's a Renaissance wax you can use. So I'm going to not dip that little fella. Not for any reason other than it doesn't really need it. There's a, not so much white on there. Oh, goodness. Not so much white on there that you're, it's really gonna make a difference. So I'm also not gonna dip that. And then for fun, I had these, which I was already planning on dipping anyway. Now I do go through the entire acid dipping thing. Um, I'll talk a little bit about it, but if you really want to know how to really just concentrate on the acid, I'm going to put a little link up in the corner. You can go ahead and watch that video. Oh dear, it's a little windy. Oh, I should have mentioned that when you're doing something like this, you're going to want lots of circulation because the acid will give off fumes. So that's something I probably would have told you in that acid video. So we're going to get to it now. I'm going to figure out what I want to do with these Murex if I want to take a chance and dip them anyway. So I'm going to get my gloves and my safety goggles and my safety equipment and we'll get to dipping. Okay, here comes the fun part. I finally made all my decisions and these are the candidates for dipping. I'm actually really excited to see how this particular true tulip is going to turn out. I will put it in the acid for three seconds. I'm going to actually change the grip on there. There we go. Make sure I have a kind of a better grip on that. Dip it in the acid for three seconds and then put it directly into the water that has a little bit of baking soda in it because it will help dilute and stop the acid, the burning process. So I'm going to put this in for three seconds. It's oof. You really see that should probably mention you should wear a mask as well and then that goes in the water yeah quite a difference huh that is just fantastic awesome okay let's keep it moving again I'm just going to adjust dip it's, it's like magic so this is a lightning walk and you can kind of see that layer of calcium on there three seconds in the acid now for harder to you know ones that are super duper crusty you can go a little bit longer i just because i tend to err on the side of caution i would say maybe do it once and then go back and dip it not too shabby so I'm just gonna, let's see, here's this tulip. That one was green. So we had already put it in bleach. Now we're gonna go ahead and see what the acid, I don't think that that white spot is gonna really change much, but let's go ahead and see. In the acid it goes. Oh, let's see. Oh. 
Well, I'll be darned. That cleaned right up. So that actually was a fantastic resurrection of a shell. It started green. We'll come back. We'll do a comparison. Let's just, let's keep going. Now, some of these I did pick out. Oh, we're not dipping the olive. And olive is one of those shells that would have a natural shine that I, I personally wouldn't dip. By all means, you, you do you. You do what you want to do. I decided not to dip those apple murex, but we'll come back to those. This apple murex, I did decide to dip. So not too terrible. It's got a little bit of crustiness on there, but quick little dip in the acid. And it's gonna look very bright. The colors are really, really, really come out. So there's that murex. Now, of course, because it's wet, it's gonna look better anyway. Isn't that pretty? I don't wanna, I don't wanna think about the aperture. The, it's not gonna be shiny anymore. That's okay. All right, let's pick one that, all right. I'm gonna pick one that I, that I really don't think is gonna do much. This guy. I think that that's mostly beach, beach worn, bleached out. I don't think that's calcium, but let's see. Let's just dip and see. Yeah. It revealed a tiny, tiny bit of color. But not you know not as much as you're going to see i mean a little bit a little bit and the ones that are the really fun to dip i think something like this because it looks you know rather rather bland or at least it's not as colorful as it can be dip that yeah see a little bit of color there so those are always really 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 fun to see how they transform. Look at that, just kind of reveals all that color that was underneath the calcium. So that's basically what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. I'll show you the results. Um, you know, I'll stop and do a little quick before and after, but you basically, you understand what's going on here. And so I'm just gonna kind of have at it and speed it up and keep on dipping. While those beautifully dipped shells are drying, I'm now going to deal with these. And what I've decided to do with these, and including that uh, apple murex, is I'm just going to use mineral oil on them. I'd also made a video comparing mineral oil to the acid, and the results were actually really, really similar. So I'm curious to see if I can get some of the color back on those guys with just using the mineral oil, thereby preserving that gorgeous purple shiny interior. So all I'm gonna do is apply me, I mean, I guess there's different ways you can do it. I put the mineral oil on a paper towel. I get the shell nice and kind of slathered with the oil. And then I just kind of buff it off with a washcloth. There's something that's absorbent that'll take that excess oil off. So it looks something like this. Let's put that oil, I'll close this lid because undoubtedly it will fall. Just kind of get it on that shell real good. Put that to the side and I'm going to take this cloth and really kind of try to get that excess oil off. So it takes away that white looking layer without removing the shine. So that's another way you can go about you know, getting the color back to your shell without using the acid and doing something that won't harm that, that shiny coating on the inside. Now 
Now the Apple Murex is a little bit tougher because obviously it's got a lot of crevices, nooks and crannies, so it's not as easy as something that's flat like those gaudy nauticas. So I'm just kind of pressing the paper towel to kind of try to put contact with the shell and kind of so you can see it is bringing that color back, but it's pretty oily. So I'm going to try to do what I can to kind of get the excess oil off. Now, I don't know that I love the results on the Murex. It still looks kind of oily. Um, so I, again, a personal preference. I'll probably work out a little bit more because I really did want to not damage the shell. So it, it is an option. I don't know that I love it again. Maybe I'm going to have to soak up the oil on the shell for quite a bit. But it is an option. Don't know if I love it. And then if you did happen to have something that had a natural shine and it's gone, this is just an old olive I had just kind of kicking around. It'll give it a little bit. It'll bring back a little. This, the color is what it is. But if you happen to like, I happen to love that natural shine. So it'll bring... It'll give it just a little bit more, a little bit more shininess. For the most part though, the, I like using the mineral oil if it's something delicate and I don't want to dip it in acid, that you can use it to kind of restore the color. Okay, we got a lot of cleaning done, but and let's, let's review what we did with what sand dollars we put in the hydrogen peroxide. Some of them are still not quite as white as I'd like. It has been over a week. So I'm just going to let them continue to soak. Hopefully those eventually, those stubborn stains will come out. So sand dollars, hydrogen peroxide, and then I seal them with one part glue, one part water, and I paint that mixture on, let it dry, and that's how I deal with my sand dollars. Next, moving on to stuff that was green, or stuff that really just needed, maybe it had that periostracum bleach only. So sometimes, again, depending on what the shell is and what kind of issue or cleaning issue you're having with the shell will determine the process sometimes bleach only especially if there's shells that you don't want to strip off that natural shine so those are examples these are ones that we just did bleach only and then other ones we soaked in bleach and then we dipped in acid that would be some of these guys like that true tulip especially these we only dipped in acid because they just only had that little bit of white on them and so they only needed the acid some of them no matter what you do it is what it is you're not going to get that color back it's been bleached out by the sun the color is gone so nothing you do is going to bring that back and then these are probably some of my favorites that cleaned up especially this tulip I thought that that cleaned up considering where we started from and where we got, I think that came out fantastic. Another one of my favorites is this gaudy. Again, from considering what it looked like when we started to where we are now, yeah, I know it doesn't fix the pitting or the little hole in it, but I still think that ended up being a nice, real pretty shell. And what if, I mean, what if you were on vacation and you only found that one shell and you, that's it. You don't have an option to do any others. So this chestnut turban also cleaned up beautifully. And then this guy, still shiny. I thought it came out nice. Not acid, this I ended up putting oil on it. We'll see how it goes. I don't know, the uh, jury's out on what I think about that. And as I get more tips and you guys give me more ideas and more things to try, I will try them and I will share it with you. But I hope this helps a little bit depending on what you found at the beach and how you can go about either cleaning your sand dollars or your shells. So thank you so much. I'll see you out on the beach. Thank you so much for watching my video on how I clean my beach treasures. If you do like the beach and things beach related, I do recommend you subscribe. I go on a new beach walk every Sunday.